This is the GIS Evening Report for Friday, April 26, 2024. I am Sherry Ann Noel. In the headlines, Upper House of Parliament passes Electronic Communications Bill. We'll have details to this story and more when we return. Kiriko Maroon and String Band Music Festival 2024, April 26 to the 28th. Coming together to preserve and showcase our culture is who we are. Friday the 26th, Belmont at the Chapel. Early morning libation, 3 p.m. Saraka. 7 p.m. the official opening ceremony and cultural evening. Saturday from 10 a.m. Hillsborough Square. It's Strings in the City. Then at 8 p.m. we move to the Botanical Gardens for cultural explosion with local and regional performances featuring Touch the Band. Admission $60. Then on Sunday, it's the grand finale, Paradise Beach. From 12 noon, musical entertainment. And from 4 p.m., Paradise Beach Friends. Cultural entertainment and live music. Admission $20. Come along to dance the quadrille and big drum on Paradise Beach every Sunday after the launch until the festival ends. Carico Maroon at String Band Music Festival 2024, April 26th to the 28th. Welcome back. The Upper House of Parliament has passed the Electronic Communications Bill 2024 that seeks to reform the law relating to telecommunications in contracting states of the Eastern Caribbean, Telecommunications Authority, ECTEL. The bill was presented to the House by Leader of Government Business, Senator Adrian Thomas, one day after it was passed in the lower house. He described it as an important pillar in the development of society. Senator Thomas told members of both sides of the House that with the evolution of the telecommunications sector, the need has arisen for revision and inclusion of certain clauses. Therefore, we believe as a government that the time has come for we to transform the telecommunication sector. Madam President, the sector is currently regulated by the Telecommunication Act, Chapter 315C. And today, we believe that we need to advance that. And hence the reason why Grenada has become a contracting party with other OECS members in advocating and being part of the, tele the telecommunication transformation. Dominica, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines are all part of it. And while Dominica and St. Kitts may have done their work already and in terms of moving forward, we are here today to discuss, and I use the word discuss, because I believe that this is so important that it might be practical and maybe wise to use the word discuss rather than debate. Because at the end of the day, this is so important for Grenada to move forward. The objective of the ECTEL Treaty, Senator Thomas says, is to establish the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority as a regulatory authority for telecommunications to serve member states, with a commission established by each contracting state. It is important that we redefine this subject matter. It is important that we put new definitions to suit the present time and conditions that we are living in. Part two, Madam President, outline the duties and powers of the minister. And therefore, it gives the minister the authority to make regulations. Very, very important. And those are parts, Madam President, that, is, that becomes essential if we are to move forward with this bill. Farmers' representative in the Senate, Senator Roderick Sinclair, gave his full support to the bill, saying it is significant. I think that the stage this is at, we shouldn't see a revision in a hurry because most of the items would have been covered. And I say this to say that we should take that sort of approach with other bills that would come here. 
by starting early and we'll have good discussions. It's good to see that because for a lot of persons, first time they hear about this NTRC. I myself sometimes is confused. I interact with NTRC a few times and they are more like a, a sort of regulatory group of persons and in this secrecy club doing something with, with regulations. Having them become a body corporate, I think, gives them a lot of more latitude, more independence, um, more stature, more accountability, and better governance, um, falling in line. And so this is commendable um, in terms of an approach. Other senators also gave the approval to the Electronics Communications Bill. Moving along, Minister for Social Development, Senator the Honorable Gloria Thomas, reaffirmed the Ministry's unwavering commitment to prioritizing efforts aimed at addressing gender-based violence at all levels. Gender-based violence, according to the Minister, is a trend that is still lingering in our state. At Friday's meeting of the Upper House, Senator Thomas emphasized the critical need for continuous action to curb the prevalence of gender-based violence. A comprehensive strategy is being proposed for 2024. Madam President, despite focus and the many efforts by state and non-state actors, collectively and separately, gender-based violence continues to be a pervasive issue with significant negative impact on the state. Gender-based violence has damaging consequences affecting not just those involved, but other families, communities, and by extension, our island. As part of the ministry's response to GBZ, a strategy is being proposed for the period May 2024 to December 2024. And an official media launch of the GBZ will take place on the 29th of May this next month. The Gender-Based Violence Unit has implemented programs and projects seeking to prevent and respond to the problem. Public engagements are expected to be held with stakeholders, community members, and students to continue with awareness efforts. Minister Thomas spoke of the extensive objectives of the proposed strategy dubbed the Community Engagement Strategy. To this end, a community engagement strategy is being proposed for 2024. The objectives of this strategy, one is to raise awareness of the impact of gender-based violence on the individual, family, community, and society, debunk myths that address root causes of GBV, raise awareness of the laws and resources available to address gender-based violence, engage men and boys as agents of change, strengthen support systems to identify potential change agents within communities with the intention of sustained engagement. And our target group is the general population, inclusive of secondary school students. We take a break. Much more when we return. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. Make us all VIPs. Take your vaccine, get immunized and protected. Kids, let's build our immunity to have a healthier society. I'm vaccinated. VIP champions. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Religious Affairs. Be a VIP childhood vaccination and immunization campaign in collaboration with UNICEF and the Pan American Health Organization. Welcome back. Grenada now has a transport commission chaired by attorney Francis Paul. It was established to tackle pivotal issues within the nation's transportation sector. Also sitting on the commission is Trinidadian David Bartholomew who was appointed as the Chief Executive Officer last month. The Commission will contribute to the development of transportation policies and spearhead initiatives that will help shape the development of an efficient transportation sector. 
Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell revealed during a sitting of the lower house on Thursday that the Commission will have public engagements, but the first order of duty is to ensure that it is introduced to the public. We intend, Mr. Speaker, shortly to introduce the Commission as well as the Chief Executive Officer of the Commission who's been retained from Trinidad and Tobago to lead what I would call a revolution in transportation in Grenada that is so badly needed uh, to address public transportation in Grenada. We anticipate that if not uh, this Tuesday, that by the following Tuesday, the Commission and the CEO will be introduced to the public and we will begin to have the public uh, engagement as to the plans, the stakeholders we need to address uh, to try and start tackling public transportation in, in Grenada. Prime Minister Mitchell highlighted some key issues, especially in the area relating to public transportation. He said he is very aware of the limited accessibility of public transportation in some areas. As such, government has begun plans to intervene in this light. There are some parts of the island that are grossly underserved um, as a result of the fact that we have private owners and operators providing a public good, which is public transportation. So places like St. Patrick and St. Mark suffer a lot as a result of that. And in the case of St. Patrick and St. Mark, particularly West Coast, it's compounded by the uh, challenge faced with the Molinaire landslip. And so you would see, Mr. Speaker, sometimes at from any, any time from four in the afternoon to six, there's significant overcrowding uh, at the bus terminal, particularly for persons who have to get to that part. If you go on the carnage, you would also see massive crowds gathered at the carnage waiting to get a bus to go up the eastern flank. St. David. So, Mr. Speaker, we are, we've begun the engagement with the, with the Bus Owners Association. We wish to encourage the actual formalization and the creation of a legal entity that actually is the National Bus Owners Association so that all of the bus owners can belong to, 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 to this association so that it becomes easier for the government to treat with them. The Grenada Football Association will on May 5th kick off its 100th anniversary celebrations with what it terms Legends Weekend where two exciting football matches will be played at the football grounds at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. The first match will feature local celebrities like Dash, Little Natty and Thunder, Boise and Shortleg, among others, coming up against an ex-national team, while the highlight will be match number two, where legends from the Caribbean will take on the world. President of the Grenada Football Association, Marlon Glean, a former national footballer himself, was a guest on GIS Informed Discussions Friday, where he shared an insight into the upcoming weekend matches. Glenn says while he will not be lacing up his boots this time around, the idea is to have an impactful start to the celebrations. One, to, to do an event that, that once it's done, everybody took note um, that Grenada is doing something big. Um, these legends play in, comp in tournament competitions all over the world. Um, you know, we're still working on trying to get Drogba here uh, as part of the group. And Drogba is just coming back from France. Um, the, the president of France, Macron, had, a, had a, um, some celebratory competition tournament recently over the last couple of days. So he went to participate in it. And, um, and he's now trying to free up his, his, see if he can get free to come down to Grenada. So we've been talking to him for a couple of months now. Um, but once these guys leave Grenada, they go into a tournament in South Africa. And once they finish in South Africa, they go to Thailand the next week at a FIFA event. Um, but we've never had a, a, a match like that in the Caribbean before. What we've so had, this is the first. this is the first in terms of the magnitude of the match, in terms of so many uh, uh, legends coming to play in a match, this is the first for the Caribbean. We've had matches around the region before where one or two legends would show up, um, Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados, where you'll see two or three legends in the country. But we've never had two teams of legends actually playing within the Caribbean. So this is a first for the Caribbean. And not just that, but if you look at the caliber of the individuals coming, uh, we have at least 10 players who have played in the World Cup. Um, from from um, Emmanuel Adibayo to to um, to Russell Atapi to Stern John from Trinidad to uh, Ricardo Gardner and uh, PP Goodison from Jamaica. Green says a number of the legends coming to Grenada for the event played at the highest level of the game and have a huge social media following. We wanted to to provide uh, the Grenada the opportunity to not just remember these guys from TV but to actually see them in person, to interact with them, et cetera. 
So for the last year, I've been having conversations with all these guys and, um, and trying to convince them to come to Grenada to, to, to participate. But I think it's, it's even bigger than the football because it's an opportunity. And, I, and, I, and what I was selling to, to these players was, you know, it's 100 years of football, but still it's a 50 year anniversary of independence. Mm -hmm. So how do we tie these two together and celebrate Grenada? The Legends Weekend Glean says is much more than just a football match. It is a well conceptualized marketing tool for Grenada. It's Serious more about tool. it's more about showcasing Grenada, showcasing Grenada as a football country, showcasing Grenada as a tourist destination, showcasing Grenada as a, a little uh, a spot in the world that can do big things. Um, and hence the reason why we wanted to start it out that way. Um, in regards to the other game, the celebrities versus the, the ex-nationals, we wanted to pre uh, also include uh, some of our ex-national players in the celebration. And, um, and, uh, and the best way to do it is to try to let them play. Football fans are expected to witness an epic showdown in both the Caribbean versus the world and the Grenada ex-national team select versus Grenadian celebrity matches. The first match will kick off at 5 p.m. We will be back after our final break. I'm a VIP. I'm a VIP. As a parent, it is my responsibility to care and protect my children. It is my responsibility to ensure they are safeguarded at all times. It is the same for you to safeguard your children by keeping them on their vaccination and immunization schedule. Make them a VIP, vaccinated, immunized, and protected. I am Pinky Fabulous. I am a VIP health champion. Be a VIP like me. Let's all be VIP champions. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Religious Affairs. Be a VIP Childhood Vaccination and Immunization Campaign in collaboration with UNICEF and the Pan American Health Organization. Welcome back. Officers from the Extension and Agronomy Divisions of the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Forestry and Marine Resources are engaged in a hand pollination session at the Maribel Propagation Station aimed at combating the decline in soursop production on the island. This activity forms part of the Soursop Value Chain Initiative of the Ministry of Agriculture, supported by the Food and Agriculture Organization, where earlier assessments highlighted Soursop's significant economic potential. The project aims to enhance the capacity of all stakeholders in the chain to fully realize the fruit's potential. This initiative also aims to uphold Grenada's unique position as the sole exporter of fresh Soursop to the U.S. market. Supervisor of, the, of Propagation at the Maribel Station, Nigel Gibbs, said over the past six years there have been a decrease in production of soursop. He attributed this decline to the absence of natural pollinators for the fruit, prompting the adoption of manual pollination on the island. Gibbs further explained that less than 2% of the flowers produced by the trees ultimately result in pollination and soursop growth, leading to this diminished production. He said hand pollination has the potential to boost fruit development by as much as 80%. And the advantage of this is that the hand pollination could increase um, fruit development by up to 80%. So it is a move from having maybe 50, 60 pounds a, a tree to having in excess of two to 300 pounds on that same tree once the flowers, the pollination is on top of it. Gibbs observed that such remarkable success will result in a greater abundance of seeds for propagation purposes at the station. Because of the demand for plants and the success of seedlings, although you will have some variation because of the pollination and you know, some genetic variation, um, the focus here is that if we have more fruits and, and from the station, then we will have more seeds to propagate. Now, if we sell, we distribute in seedlings, um, and we also want to do grafted plants. I think the target this year for grafted soursop will be somewhere in the region of 2000. Um, we're probably just about 2 to 3 percent in, but um, we have the seedlings and hopefully we should reach close to the target, albeit that the season is a bit late now. But we will have seedlings 
for a root stock to graph and we will also have seedlings for distribution. Um, the, the benefit here of the pollination is that we will have more planting material available to us on site and so we would not have to be depending on the farmers um, to bring in seeds because sometimes they would assist in this regard. And with that story, we come to the end of the GIS Eden Report for Friday, April 26, 2024. Now for a recap of the top story. Upper House of Parliament passes the Electronic Communications Bill. I am Sherian Noel, thanking you for viewing.